Hello everybody and welcome to Romanceville's Tarot. I'm about to begin here with a reading. Now this is a reading for the 27th of December 2020 and it is a general reading so it might not resonate with everybody so please do take whatever does resonate with you and simply leave the rest of it aside. If ever you do have any questions, if ever you would like to have your own reading, please do contact me. My information is right below into the YouTube description box. Also, if you do enjoy the channel and you have not yet subscribed, please do take a brief moment to click onto the subscribe button to show your support to the channel and to myself and it would be greatly appreciated. So with no further ado, um, we are going to begin this reading. This is a reading from Spirit. So this is a channeled reading by Spirit to come and deliver to you a blind spot in particular. So we're going to go and check out what this blind spot is. We're going to conclude with a message from one of your guides and I would like to mention because I haven't done it so far to confirm to you that you are into the right reading if you are a Pisces. So this is your reading. Let's begin. So we're going to begin over here and find out what your sigil is, what your blind spot. Okay, we're going to put the guide and your blind spot is going to be judgment. Now, your negative judgment in um your negative judgment is making it a little bit impossible to get the result that you want right now in life onto your journey. Uh, to have a perspective at all you're going to have to judge here. To even call a clock a clock is to judge it as a clock. So it's restricting its potential energy of that of a clock, right? So we're kind of judging. That's what people do. And judgment, like any tool, can be really beneficial to you, but it can also be harmful. It can be harmful to you depending on when and how it is used. Now we all have a perspective about each other, and if you have an opinion, you have judged. Trying not to have an opinion just kind of defies life together. In, it is in its flexibility and in the openness of the opinion that makes the opinion either more or less painful. And it is our perspectives and individual preferences that fuel universal expansion. So, hearing other people's honest perspectives can be really beneficial to your growth and to your expansion and to the one of the universe. A great many people, they try to get rid of judgment. They try to get ju rid of judgment, but in themselves. And this is neither beneficial nor is it possible at all. However, noticing and changing your painful judgments, so the ones that seek to push something away from you, well, as well as developing a flexibility in your perspective that is beneficial. So, what you must first understand is that it is painful to negatively judge and to disapprove of something for both the giver and the criticism of the receiver. In holding negative judgment, we must match the frequency of our negative judgment and so we kind of hold ourselves back as well as to the receiver but in a low vibrational chokehold. And this is what we do when we try to push away anything in a universe based on the law of attraction. We do nothing but vibrationally join the thing that we're kind of pushing against. So it does become included in our vibration. And this is why many teachers and many guides are going to tell you not to accept any negative judgment from within. And instead of taking that negative judgment, you need to adopt the policy that if you don't have something nice to say or to think, just don't do it, don't think about it, don't say it at all. But this is neither practical and it's not very useful, is it? And it puts a muzzle on a part of you that very much needs your attention, needs your care, needs to speak, needs to express itself. So, becoming aware of your own judgments opens the door for growth. And sharing your honest opinion and your experience, even if that opinion or experience is not positive, it provides others with that opportunity to grow. 
So when we make judgments about situations, we believe behavior is due to something in a person's situation, but without fully understanding that person's situation. For example, you may judge someone as irritable because they're on, you know, maybe they're, they've been having a bad day or something. But when we make judgments about a person's character or personality, we just believe that their behavior is due to certain aspects of their personality, when often it isn't. Our brains are just wired to make automatic judgments. That's all. So we move through the world really, really quickly. And what do we do? We do the discerning. We do not spend time, we do not spend energy on understanding everything that we perceive. And when we judge, we have an attachment to the right versus the wrong and the good versus the bad. And then we are very black or white in the way that we relate to the world. So we say a definite yes or no to things without really understanding it or without really even being open about it. So, in truth, you may be really terrified to understand and to open yourself to what you've already condemned. And this is really understandable and it's an unnecessary fear though. It must also be said that people cannot change or often even admit to what you judge for them. It is too unsafe to do so. So flexibility, understanding are really the only things that are going to make a person safe enough to look at that truth and make the changes, especially the changes that scare them. So if you push something away, which has been, uh, you know, bothering you, which you've judged, it is not going to be open to you or to even to your perspective. You need to use your awareness, your patience, your bravery to get outside your attachment to what is right, what is wrong, good or bad, and it's critical so that you can understand instead of judging. So doing so is going to set the stage for you and for the people around you for unification, for harmony and for communication that creates really a certain resolve and that is exactly what you're looking for. So moving on over to your guide message, we have release toxic relationships. So in order for your soul to thrive, you need an environment to love and in harmony. When there's a discordance, there's an imbalance, there's a soul who's suffering and the body is often left emotional and in physical pain, oftentimes souls like you who are making progress on their spiritual path are going to attract others that are going to be attracted they're going to be drawn to your light and they can just sif on, sif on all of your energy they're just going to take it all away leaving you feeling depleted leaving you feeling empty and it's always the first impulse of the evolved soul to want to assist their fellow travelers who kind of seem to be struggling but there comes a time when you must realize that their path and your path have very little in common and that is the best way that you can part. Sometimes a soul will be brought into your journey so that you can prove to yourself that you have the where but you have the wherewithal to release them. Toxic relationships, they come in all forms and they can be really detrimental in many ways. So in your life, attempt to release those who are not in accordance with your being and do not inspire your soul. And that does conclude your reading. I do hope that you enjoyed. I do hope that it brought you a certain perspective. If you do have any questions you would like a reading, please do contact me. I wish you a beautiful day. Please don't forget to subscribe if it's not yet done, and I will be seeing you tomorrow with new messages. Many blessings to you.